Welcome to The Road Reflected with Nicole Wakeland. Automotive from the lighter side. That means cars, but also cookies, coffee, and pie. Up first, what's Nicole behind the wheel of this week? Okay, before I talk about what I was behind the wheel of, well, not technically this week, but recently, I have a wonderful co-host today. I want to welcome Jill Simonillo. Jill, so glad you took the time to chat with us. Ah, thank you. It's very good to be here. And now tell everybody your two-second elevator pitch. Who are you? Oh, can I do a pitch in two seconds? You know me. Okay, so (laughs) basically the podcast today is going to be Jill telling you who she is. (laughs) Uh, Let's see. So automotive journalist, I uh, work for Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk as well as Consumer Guide Automotive. Uh, Videos, written, podcasts, I do all of the things. And then on my own personal stuff, I have... Um, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, all of the things. And you can find me at Jill Simonello. Um, but I use the hashtag Car du Jour because Simonello is a little bit hard to spell. So Car du Jour is probably the best way to find me in all of the social media spaces. But I um, am five feet tall. I come from a short perspective um, yes. in terms of my car <laughs> reviews. And um, if you Google my name, if you can figure out how to spell it, um, you will find pictures of me in trunks of cars. And I'm just, I'm going to leave it there. Yeah. So if you want to know you first, you have to figure out how to spill Jill's last name and then you can find her. Um, yes. So the first car that we're going to talk about is something I drove a few weeks ago. You've driven it further back than that. Um, but it is the 2023 Toyota Sequoia. It was all new for 2023. It's it yes. a very needed update. I think it desperately needed it. Did you? I don't Um, it did. I feel like, um, in 2022, they sold 8,000 units total. If that tells you anything about how sorely the update was needed. It definitely needed an update. So, uh, we're going to find out about the one that I drove. Monroe moment. Okay. I had the 2023 Toyota Sequoia platinum hybrid as a 3.4 liter twin turbocharged V6 hybrid max engine. 437 horsepower, 583 pound-feet of torque, 10-speed automatic transition, transmission, and it runs $79,370. It's a lot. So what do you think of the all-new for 2023 Toyota Sequoia, Jill? All-new? You know what? Uh, I thought it was weird. (laughs) (laughs) That is is it in a nutshell. Um, you know, I mean, it, 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 it's body on frame, so it drives like a truck. It's not going to be your traditional SUV ride and handling. And um, it's somebody on the petiter side of things, it felt heavy and big. Uh, mm-hmm. But the, the weird thing about it is the third row and the cargo space. Oh, my God. It's so weird. I mean, weird describes <laughs> that perfectly. I actually have it in the show notes. If you could have seen me the first time I went to that cargo thing, I'm like, what? what's happening? Like, there's, it's got parts. It's got a shelf. It has little partition things. And it, you have to, when you fold the third row down, then it has like it literally slides, little handle that'll slide, like what, maybe like a couple inches forward and back when it's folded. Yeah. yeah. Then you have to put the little shelf in, but open the shelf. Otherwise, when you go to slide something in, thwack, you're going to run right into the edge of this, yeah. the third row. And then the shelf can go on, like you can move it up one level and then yeah. up another level. But I couldn't figure out. I'm like, so it, what? And then I was trying to put it in. I had it in crooked. Then it was jammed in there. And I'm <laughs> right. like, now Toyota's going to be mad because I've jammed their cargo thing. And I didn't. That was weird, Jill. What did you it, think it, of that? It, it it is weird. So I mean, I I, I understand what they were trying to do, um, and that they were trying to give you options because the way that the the vehicle is set up, you're not going to have a flat load floor. And so they were trying to simulate a flat load floor with this tray. Mm -hmm. And then like if you put the third row up, you can use that tray to then um, like create um, layers of cargo space. Mm -hmm. Now, the interesting thing is this um, tray does hold 100 pounds and I did sit on it and it (laughs) didn't break. (laughs) <laughs> Woo! <Woo-hoo. laughs> so it's not really as hundred pounds, uh, but but it's just one of those things where I I mean, um, it it's just it was weird and how they implemented it and uh, I, yeah, I just I mean it's, I I think it's better than the previous generation, but it's still it's just weird and 
I did a video at the Chicago Auto Show this year, and I was comparing the Grand Highlander to the Toyota Sequoia to mm-hmm. the um, Sienna, Toyota okay. Sienna. So minivan, body on frame SUV, unibody SUV. And um, I mean, obviously, in terms of cargo space, the the minivan is always going to win. In terms of third row space, the minivan is always going to win. Not sexy. Nobody wants that. Um, (laughs) And so then, you know, went to the Grand Highlander and that is really a well executed vehicle. And so I, I don't understand the point of the Sequoia. Like, why is Sequoia still existing? I don't, it feels like, like, I, I appreciate that they did this version of it, that they have this great hybrid max powertrain, that they gave it mm-hmm. things like an available 14 inch infotainment screen, and they have the capstone trim that they first introduced on the Tundra. They've now brought that over as the sort of fancy, like you think how Buick has Avenir and GMC has, I just right. forgot, Genali. It's capstones kind of like their fancy trim. It's great that they did these things to make bits and pieces better. Like they've improved it, they've improved style and looks, but that third, you know, you want a three row SUV, you you want to be able to have some cargo room, you want to have that be usable. (laughs) And when that third row is up, it's, there's not a lot back there. And when it sits down, it's just so, it's awkward. Like, I feel like it's almost like halfway, it's like the all new mostly for 2023 Toyota Sequoia. (laughs) Mostly all new. I don't feel like that has the same advertising zing as all new, but that's really what they did. It's like they just did like just enough. Yeah. I, I mean, and it definitely needed the redesign. Um, it it was old and tired and they were are hoping with this 2023 model that they will triple their sales volume, which, you know, sounds um, big until yeah. you understand 8,000 units sold. Right, right. It's not like they <laughs> were going... the volume. Right, it's not like we had 50,000 units. We're going to go 150. No, it's like we go from eight, we'd like to sell maybe 24,000, which is still a low number. I don't, I don't, I mean, I guess there's a certain ruggedness to the Sequoia, maybe. Is it the rugged vibe for this, that it's kind of a burly, old school kind of style? I feel like you said it's heavy. It does feel heavy. Even driving it, it has this like weight to it? Is it for maybe a person who just wants, I don't want this sleek, you know, sexy, stylish, like, not that it's not stylish, but it's just so burly and heavy. Is there a certain consumer, 8,000 people thought they wanted that last year. (laughs) Well, I have a feeling um, a lot of it has to do with the body on frame construction because, you know, it's built on the same platform from the um, Tundra. And um, so, I mean, it has a very truck-like ride and there are people, so, you know, I work with Tim Esterdahl at Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk and he is a truck guy mm-hmm. and he wants truck things and he wants things to drive like a truck. And, Has he driven um, the Sequoia? Has he driven this? Yeah, we actually drove it together. We were on the, the drive program together and, um, you know, I think he liked it a lot more than I did. He did. And he's the <laughs> yeah. truck guy. He's like, just yeah. give me the thing that gets the job done. That's all I want. Yeah, well, you know, and 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 like I said, there's there is a certain segment of the population that they want the heaviness, they want the the truck like feel, and and for me, like I want something to be capable, but I want it to be comfortable, and you know, I want good visibility, and and I'll be honest, like the the Tundra and the Sequoia don't like for a petite driver, they are not ideal because I feel like um, a grandma and I sit like really low <laughs> and it's just like, you know, I'm like trying to see over the, the, the hood and out, you know, it's got a high belt line and it's just for somebody who's small, it's just not, it's well, not ideal. I was thinking that even for me, I'm five, six, so I'm pretty average height for a woman. And it feels I get that same sense and I'm not your size, Jill, you're, you're <laughs> chunk shorter. So I'd imagine if you're shorter, especially it's going to feel a little cumbersome. I mean, I like what they did. I like where they were trying to go, but I feel it was kind of sort of halfway. Okay, everyone, if you like what you're hearing, then go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe either on YouTube or your favorite podcatcher. So we're kind of staying in the same family for our second segment. We've gone from Toyota to Lexus, and this isn't something we've driven. We're going to talk about something that they revealed like, huh, at a big event in Texas, the Lexus GX and Lexus TX. <laughs> Uh, mm-hmm. We were both at this big reveal. Yes. Um, so for the Lexus GX, this is just a new version. Like there's already a Lexus GX. It exists. So for 2024, they came up with a new one. Um, initially, it's just a twin turbocharged V6. There's a hybrid coming later. We don't have details. One of the things they did was there's no longer the spindle grill, the Lexus spindle 
grill. Did you like that spindle grill, Jill? I I did. You and did. The reason I liked it is because it's different. Okay, it's it's big, and then some. I, I kind of feel like on their big vehicle, like in a smaller vehicle, Lexus spindle grill, cool. On a big one, you're like, oh dear God, oh, Lexus yeah. spindle grill. <laughs> no, I will say on the LX 600, the yeah. grill is hideous, especially when you have the one with the horizontal bars. I felt like I was in jail. It's, <laughs> like, it's yeah. a lot. So it, they're it going away lot. from spindle grill and then now calling it spindle body. Yeah. Which, well, it, it was like, I don't know. It kind of is. So it's like style wise, the grill isn't quite as in your face as it was before. That's how I think. I think it's still there. It's just toned down a little bit. <laughs> yeah. And, but what's not toned down, this is actually beefier the old one. It's longer, it's wider. Um, in every single way, this is more rugged, more everything, more ger arg than it was before. Um, it's just arg. Ger arg. That's a really technical description. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that, Jill. Um, Got it. Yeah. So there's six different grades. All of them are pretty premium because this is a Lexus. So it's like yeah. when you get into luxury brands, you know, even the base trim is still pretty darn nice. You know, it's sort of like the mid range or higher of an average trim. Um, and this gets things like their standard features. There's a 14 inch infotainment touchscreen and a 10 speaker Mark Levinson audio system. And, you know, th <laughs> th things to make it feel fancy. What did you think when you took a look at this in Texas? You know, I really liked it. It's one of those things that it's there's there's certainly a little bit of an in your face style to it. It's very upright. Um, my first glance at it made me think of a Land Rover Defender. And ironically, mm. I was driving a Land Rover Defender, at, you know, at home at the same time. And and so it just definitely made me think of, of the Defender. Um, and I, I, you know, I'm not meaning this is a knock against Land Rover, but it's going to be a knock against Land Rover. <laughs> but I'm like, this is the Defender that actually is reliable. Oh, you know, ouch, but, but yeah, accurate, no. probably. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, this this is this is going to be the off-road capable vehicle that you want to buy if you intend to have it for a long time and don't want to, you know, keep taking it to the dealer um, to fix it. Um, it has a lot of uh, interesting things. And, you know, you and I have both done Rebel. And I have to mm -hmm. tell you, one of the things that I really appreciated about this vehicle that I think every vehicle that goes off-road should have is that it yeah. has a cool box. It has a what? Cool box. Oh like yes. In the, yeah, in the um in the armrest. And and like I tell you, after a long day off-roading in the desert and like 110 degrees, the only thing that you want at the end of the day is a cold beverage. And the only thing that you can't have is cold a cold beverage. beverage because there is no ice in the desert. <laughs> no, and you know it's funny, the first time I had any vehicle in fact. It's, I remember it may have been a Defender the first time I saw one. It's the Defender that I'm trying to remember what I had that had the cool box. I remember thinking, this is silly. This is stupid. Nobody needs this. This is superfluous. No one needs this. Oh, wait, this is brilliant. Like, what is that? <laughs> yeah. I, I very quickly changed my tune. I was like, oh, wait, I get it. This is kind of great to have. So, and they have, in addition to having the cool box, they've got two new trims for this they have an over trail and an over trail plus and so i think like off-road and off-road fancier are the two yeah. different are, are basically the plus is like we made you fancier um yeah. and it does some stuff like you get um a locking rear diff and there's 18 inch wheels with um all trade tires there's skid plates um but that trim is only two rows you can get three rows in the yeah. rest of the gx lineup this is only two rows do you think that's gonna hurt them no, because when you when you think about the fact that um, people who are going off road, overlanding, you know, doing the desert thing, you're going to want the space in the back for your tent, for your sleeping mat, for your. So you know, I mean, I you have a lot of stuff that you need to take with you if you are mm -hmm. going to be camping in the desert. You know, in addition to um, like food and water and stuff like that that you may need to bring with you. I mean, they recommend like five gallons a day to have right. on your, you know, vehicle. And um, so I, I think that people who are going to use this for overlanding and who would want that trim aren't going to want the third row. They're going to want the, you know, I, and granted, you can fold the third row flat. You know, it doesn't have the funky, you know, right. Sequoia. The weird Sequoia <laughs> thing, whatever that is. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you can fold the third row flat, but I think the people are just going to always want that space for their gear. 
Yeah, I think it makes sense. People are talking about, like, oh, you know, you've lost that third row, but you're generally, you're not, you're not looking for this spacious thing that you're taking the kids like to the soccer practice. You're taking this off road. You can actually benefit more, I think, from having just the space for all of your stuff because it's a lot to pack if you're off roading. And these are off road trims. That's exactly yeah. what they're made for. So yeah. the other vehicle that they introduced, the Lexus TX, which the fact that they brought it in Texas, now I'm going to think of it forever as the Lexus Texas. Oh, like, God. <laughs> like between the fact that it says TX and it was introduced right. in Texas, like you guys, uh, this isn't just new this year. It's new, period. Yep. The end. They did not have this before. Um, the idea that it's going to replace the RXL. So this one is a little bit yeah. longer. It's bigger. It has a it has more third row space for the versions that have, you know, because you can't get the third row on all the trims of the GX. You can get it on the TX and it's roomier. Like you can use this third row. This is for someone who actually is taking the kids to soccer practice. Um, and it is the biggest Lexus they make. Yeah. So what do you think about the TX? You know, so it's funny because they, they revealed the TX and the GX at exactly the same time during the same presentation. And everybody was wowed by the GX, like justifiably, because mm -hmm. that is the cooler vehicle. Um, not going to lie, totally the cooler vehicle. It is but cool. the TX is going to be the moneymaker. So the GX, I think, is the wow. And the TX is going to be, you know, the practical, everybody is going to buy that vehicle. Um, and it is, um, you know, I, built on the same platform as the Grand Highlander. So you have a lot of similarities there in terms of, you know, just the, the side profile, the overall look and feel of the vehicle, other than the whole spindle grill thing, because this this has that in spades. This is another yes. one of those grills that's kind of in your face. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> but like it, it's a little bit more refined on the inside. So driving the Grand Highlander, um, loved it, thought it mm -hmm. was great, super smooth, really, um, you know, the powertrains were great. Everything was really nice. But it didn't go far enough in terms of luxurious amenities on it. Yes. So I really feel like the TX is going to pick up where the Grand Highlander left off. And um, it's stupid, simple stuff like the um, entry into the third row. Mm -hmm. So in the Grand Highlander, you have this lever that you have to pull to move the, the third row or the second row to get into the third row. But on the TX, there's a button. Right. You know, stupid, simple thing, but well, it's, it's so those, much better. It's the little, it's really, sometimes it's the little things that take a car, like, okay, the Grand Highlander does a great job of what it does. You add that little button, that is a convenience feature. It makes your life a little bit easier. It removes some frustration and it makes a luxury car feel like more of a luxury car because part of luxury isn't just like I paid a lot and it has leather seats. It yeah. makes your life feel a little easier. It takes a little yeah. bit of the drudgery out of life. If it's easier to get into that third row, suddenly having that car, you feel like it's something special and you're like, okay, so it's kind of worth it to pay the extra money for this. So yeah. I think it is, I think you're exactly right. I think it's going to take you from folks who go all the way to the top trim of the Grand Highlander and are looking at it and thinking, well, this is good, yeah. but it's not quite what I want. If you even just go with the base trim on the TX, suddenly now you're going to have your luxury. Yep. So which one, if you had to pick, if you're, you're, you're going to get a Grand Highlander or you're going to get a TX, which one would you get, Jill? You have a family of at least three, um, a kid in soccer. Uh, I'm going to make one play hockey because that takes up a lot of room too. And you have <laughs> to get them all over town. Would you go with the TX or Grand Highlander? I, I mean, if I had the money, I would totally go for the TX because I, I like that, like, I'm the per like I'm the size of a ten year old. I'm the person who sits in the third row. She's exaggerating. Well, She's the size of a tall ten year old. No, go ahead, Jill. No, I'm the size of like maybe a ten and a half year old. Ten and no, a half year old. I'm the size of a ten year old. And like, okay, so side story. I went to go and buy golf clubs this weekend, and I because um, I have a a challenge with Tim Esterdahl, who is my boss, and he's a golfer. And when we hit hundred thousand subscribers on that channel. I have to play golf with him. So I'm like, crap, we're getting close. I've got to go buy <laughs> golf clubs. So I went to go buy golf clubs this weekend. And um, I go in and he's like, the, the salesperson is like, oh yeah, we'll take you over to the petite clubs. And my husband's like, how about kids clubs? And the guy looks at me and he like looks down at me, looks up at me and he's like, yeah, actually kids clubs are going to be better. <laughs> Did you get kids golf clubs? I have kids golf clubs. Okay, I can't wait for you guys to hit 100,000 views because I just really want to see you out there with Tim Esterdahl and you, him trying to play golf and you with your little teeny tiny kids. Oh, yeah. 
golf clubs. I love yeah. this idea. The little the little sticks. They're orange. Um, hey, wait, did we just drive by a bakery? Okay, Jill. So you and I have this running thing now. I do this this whole bakery food thing at the end of every episode. Um, but I'd like to have my guests pick something. You are much healthier in general about what you <laughs> eat than I am. And once upon a time, you tried to fi- feed me a gluten. Was it gluten free? Right? Wasn't it just gluten free? Gluten free and dairy free. It was gl- oh and dairy free. Sorry, gluten free and dairy free cookie. And I had said it's a sad cookie. It's it's sad. It doesn't. Yeah. And, and sad. we have since gone on with, I eat normal cookies and Jill eats sad cookies, but you have a, I said, do you have a sad cookie place? And you said, no, you have a sad pastry place to recommend. Well, it's a sad <laughs> dessert place, not a sad pastry place. Oh, a sad dessert place. And I yes. should clarify, I'm totally picking on her. If you're gluten-free, dairy-free, vegan, whatever, have at it. This is just a running thing. So I'm like, Jill, you got to pick someplace good. You got, I mean, so this this is good, and it is so good that I will guarantee that even you, Nicole, oh gosh, would like it. Do I have to come to Chicago to try this? Is it in Chicago? It is in Chicago, and you have to come in the summer because oh, only the summer. Okay, only the summer. It is an Italian ice place. Oh uh, well, Italian ice. I like that. Isn't that already? like free of merry many things free, dairy free yes okay by like it's um, designs so you're not removing something it already started that way it did it did okay um, but there's this place in chicago it's called miko's italian ice it's m-i-k-o and then like apostrophe s and they have a location in logan square and they have one in old irving park in chicago and i will be honest with you like when i first moved to chicago many moons ago they used to have a location in bucktown and i was within walking distance of that location and every time i've moved in chicago i have made sure that i have been within walking distance of one of their locations this is how much i love this place okay and um it's a family owned place and it's like i i want to say that the it's a, a walk up window and it's in the um like in their house almost oh. or it's like attached to their house okay um but but they had, I, I posted this weekend on my instagram i went and i had a sour cherry and black raspberry um italian ice and then i had uh, the second photo is all of their flavors so they have orchata they have chocolate they have coconut they have lemon lime so they strawberry they've got okay, the more wait, what's or, what's the one that you said that sounded like it was italian or chata um, what's that one? or chata that's like a, a mexican um like almost i want to say like a milk drink it's oh like okay a, a i mean i know what you're so spanish with, okay yep I yeah, got yeah. You. Okay. And, um, but so they have like all of the different, um, like they do, uh, like occasionally they'll do hibiscus, they'll do kiwi. So, but they, they do it kind of very seasonally in terms of what's in season right now. Okay. So like this past weekend was sour cherry and they probably won't have it again oh. because it, it, it's like not in, in season or whatever, but, but, and it's really difficult to do to like pit all the cherries. I did have that conversation with them at one point. I'm like, I need sour cherry more. And they're like, yeah, no, we're not pitting the cherries. So this is all so that there's a natural flavor element to this. It's not like they're buying oh, yeah. some fake like cherry syrup. If they're out there actually pitting cherry, are there pieces oh, yeah. of cherries in yes. it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Bits in there. Everything that they do, they don't use any syrups. So a lot of the Italian ice places that you go to are like the fake syrupy crap. Yeah. Like the and stuff you use... get like on a snow cone from like, I'm yeah. thinking of like the, the ice cream truck that is like really hard and it's colors that are not natural nope. at all. Nope. And they, they only use fresh fruit, like when they're in their fruit flavors. So, yeah. I mean, like one of my favorites is watermelon and oh, you will sometimes get watermelon seeds in <laughs> your watermelon. Um, that's, but that's it's proof that that's your proof that it's actually like, we did not use fake watermelon. You've just chomped on a seed. It's real watermelon, yes. but yes. they're only, and this is exclusively Italian ice. That's it. Yes. And it's they're, a- when are they open? Because you're Chicago. It's not like you have the longest summer in the world. How long are they open? Um, I feel like they usually open towards the beginning of the April with like abbreviated hours. Okay. And they'll go through like October, like and at the end of the season, they'll do like abbreviated hours. And um, and they I feel like they've also started doing some um carry out orders. So like during the winter, you could um place like for a tub yeah. that you would put in your freezer, like you can place a carry out order for the Italian ice um, and they will have it ready for you. So once you get, so if they're going into October, then they're getting fall flavors. Do you get like, do you get that? Do you have a pumpkin spice? I, you know what? Or I don't apple, know. Cause maybe? 
I, 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 honestly, they definitely, I, mm, you know what? I don't know that I've ever seen them do apple. Um, I'm going to have to pay more attention. Cause like my favorite flavors are like mango, um, watermelon, and then the sour cherry. Um, okay. and, and, and so like, that's where my focus is. My husband always, he like, every time he goes, he will always get the chocolate and coconut. Oh, see, that sounds good too. That might be more, I, I might be more on, on team husband there. Chocolate and coconut sounds really yeah. good. Yeah. That's what Wait, he gets. Do you every get time. pieces of, then do you get little pieces of coconut in there? Yeah. Oh, see, I'm, I'm a, telling you, it's literally the best stuff ever. We don't have a good, I've had Italian ice. There's a place and I can't think of it. And it's actually more towards like towards New Jersey or something. Mm-hmm. And I can't think of the place and it's really well known and it's sort of famous. And I remember having it there once on a road trip with a friend and thinking like, this is pretty good stuff, but you don't really have this here. We're all about ice cream in the Northeast. Yeah. I mean, we have a lot of ice cream places. We have one place um, called Hayward's ice cream and they're, they were always seasonal like Miko's was, but now they actually are open all year round. Although the number of flavors goes from something that, you know, the size of a billboard to like 10 flavors when it's like October to maybe April, but they do, um, they do a pumpkin spice and they do an apple. And then, you know what they started doing at Christmas? I don't know how you feel about it. Do you like eggnog or are you anti eggnog? anti-eggnog it's not my favorite thing but i can do it they do an eggnog at christmas and literally it's like they would sometimes sell christmas trees even when they were closed and they would open up like the christmas tree was like a fundraiser for like the rotary club or something Mm -hmm. but they'd open up and do like three flavors of ice cream like come on i know it's two degrees but let's go get some ice cream at hayward's i feel like if your place stayed open would you go there in the middle of winter and go get yourself some italian ice Oh, a hundred percent. So like, you know, we went to dinner last night and we were driving home and I was like, Mikos? <laughs> and so we like, literally like stop by on the way home, we pick it up and then, um, but yeah, no, I, and like in the summer, I love to just kind of like walk over and then you eat it while you're walking home. Oh, and, yum. um, but, but they have this, this phrase, um, I should have, I, I don't even know where I have the, the button anymore, but it's called no cry babies. No I don't know, babies. I don't even know where that came from, but it's like they have t-shirts and buttons that say no cry babies. Okay. So like if you're gonna whine, you can't go. You can't go. Okay. I yeah, if you're getting Italian ice, just don't be crying about it. You'd be happy. Be happy. Jill, thank you so much for coming on the show. It was a great joy to talk to you and tell everyone again you got two seconds where they can find you. Pick one spot, Jill. Ah, car du jour. Do you search for the hashtag car du jour. That's how you're gonna find me. Excellent. Thanks, Jill. Thanks for listening to The Road Reflected. To follow more of Nicole Wakeland's adventures, head on over to NicoleWakeland.com. There you'll find links to her social media from TikTok to Twitter, as well as her work across a wide range of media outlets. Until next time, keep it shiny side up.